Well, hello everybody. Doug Rucker here with PressureCleaningSchool.com. Today I'm going to be talking to you about pressure washing tennis courts or soft washing tennis courts. I'm going to talk to you about how we take a tennis court that looks like that and make it look like this coming up next. Guys, one of the most important things to know and recognize about tennis court pressure washing um, anytime you're going to pressure wash tennis courts, make sure you know where uh, the water is going to drain to, your bleach mix is going to drain to. Um, this is all grass around here. I've already spoken with the school district about um, some uh, browning of the grass from the mix. They're okay with that. They understand. They just want the courts cleaned. They know this will eventually come back, and they even said if it, even if it doesn't, the uh, lawn maintenance guys will be glad because they don't have to weed whack in that area. But you always want to know where your mix is going to drain to. Make sure you're aware of that. One of the things that you can tell is by looking at the slope of the tennis courts. And I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but we've got four courts here. And so these two courts slope up this way, and then those back two courts go down. And so we knew that everything is pretty much going to drain off to that far fence over there as well as to this fence along here so knowing where everything is going to drain to is huge and preparing them in case they're you're going to have any type of landscape issues so one of the first things that you want to check when you're going to clean tennis courts is the surroundings where is everything going to drain so what we want to do is make sure that any grass areas along the edges of the court now this is a high school so all we have out there is a football field um, already talked about on the other uh, courts at the other campus how we discuss this with the facilities people they had no problem they understood that some of the grass may brown but if you're in a country club if you're in a neighborhood um, and you've got landscaping around the courts you've got lush grass all of that you're going to have to take that into consideration make sure that you are protecting it um, make sure you're watering it very well but most importantly is set, set their expectations that like on for grass they could have some browning of the grass from your rinsing so um, just want to keep that in mind this court here we've already treated it once we're back to treat it again and then uh, rinse her all off and these courts over here we have cleaned and we've got one going on right over here that we're cleaning so back to the tip here is just make sure of your surroundings even if you have concrete like we've got over here because if it uh, if your solution runs out and it's really strong you can have an issue striping this concrete striping this parking lot so See how dirty this concrete is? Down there, it's pretty clean. But uh, we had we did not have an issue here because we watered everything down real good when we rinsed. And uh, so that's the tip on this part. Make sure you know of your uh, surroundings. Show you this grass down here. I think pretty much most of this was already here, but it could be some from the bleach. Yeah, this is just a bunch of moss and weeds. So, um, so know your surroundings, know your landscaping, and make sure you have protective measures and you discuss with your customer the potential for what could happen. Hey guys, while we're talking about tennis courts, how many of you have cleaned tennis courts before? I'd love to hear about your experience. Uh, tell us about it down below in the comments section. Or if you have a question about tennis court cleaning, pressure washing tennis courts, uh, just ask the question down below and I'll try to help you out as best I can. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like, and then also hit that little bell. That'll give you a notification every time uh, I come on with some videos for you. 
All right, next you want to make sure that you're aware of the slope. Where is everything going to run off to? Is it going to is it kind of split in the middle and this is going to run that way? This is going to run this way? Is it all going to run this way? Know where everything is going to drain. You can pretty much determine that when you start applying your mix. Um, and you'll see which way it kind of runs. But always know, you know, the slope and the grade. That's going to tell you where everything's going to run off to. Very important to know that because that helps you know, um, obviously, where everything is going to drain to and where you need the protective measures the boat most. So, um, that's your tip for this one. Know the slope, know the grade. All right, guys, the next tip is know your surface. This type of surface is kind of a textured type coating where they spray it on. It's a core ha course has a concrete base to it. Matter of fact, you can see right there. And uh, so this, you don't want to use a lot of pressure on. You can see the core already has a lot of uh, little areas where some of the texture and the coating is already missing so this type of coating is either sprayed on or it is rolled on um, but you want to know your uh, surface because a surface like this you don't really want to surface clean you can see lines in this from the school district when they used a surface cleaner a couple of years ago and just water because just like concrete, what you're doing is you're etching that surface. And so you're actually taking off some of that texture. So the way we're doing this is just applying our mix and then we're uh, rinsing. So, you know, a concrete tennis court, you can probably get away with pressure as long as the paint is good, but you still just have to be real careful, nozzle down to make sure that you're not gonna etch it and leave those stripes, because that's basically what uh, striping is, is etching the concrete. Um, so, know your surface and know how you're going to clean, what your application method is gonna be, whether you're gonna soft wash, whether you're gonna use a surface cleaner, whatever. So, that's the... That's the tip for that. Know your surface. All right, so guys, the next thing you want to know is to know your degree of staining. This on your court. Over here, you know, this court looks clean for the most part. But we do have some areas around the back. So we're using our King Slinger. And it's got the Duganator mixing system on it. So all these areas we're going to hit with a 50% mix. Once these are all, you know, fully lightened and the color change has taken place, in other words, the mildew and the mold has changed color enough to where we can rinse. Uh, once we get all the black and really dirty areas done, then we'll concentrate on these areas that um, are not as dirty and turn our mix valve down probably to about a 20 percent mix maybe 10 percent just to lightly hit this area because this does not need to be near as strong and that's the beauty of having uh, the Kingslinger with the Duganator mixing station on it is we can adjust the mix on the fly so that's the tip know your degree of staining what type of percentage mix you're going to use um, where you're going to use that percentage mix and having the ability to adjust it on the fly is key. One other thing about tennis courts um, that I will add, do not put soap in your mix if you can help it. Um, it just helps the rinsing aspect of it, much like a slate roof or metal roof or whatever. You want to use as little soap to no soap as possible and that'll just help speed your rinsing time up. Okay guys, on the rinsing part, uh, it's just basically flooding the court with water. You can see we're using our nine gallon per minute uh, Mad Max machine, and so we're getting a lot of water 
volume on the court. Now we're just trying to create like a uh, rainstorm, so to speak. So just open the ball valve. Of course, the lower gallon per minute machine you have, um, the longer it's going to take you and more water you're going to need access to. Um, because you're just going to have to apply a lot more water, but we're really just, you know, flooding it with water. We're not going to have rain for a few days, so we just want to dilute this all down because it's all clean now. And uh, pretty simple process. But like I said, if you've got a four or five gallon per minute machine, it's going to take longer versus the uh, nine gallon per minute, nine gallon per minute Mad Max machine that we're using. So hope this has helped you folks. Hey, give me a like, hit the subscribe button. Um, ask me a question or comment about tennis court cleaning if I can help you. And uh, hope this has helped you guys.